Okay, if you saw my other video on Power Toys, well, even if you didn't, they've released a new version, 0.12. Not even a full release yet, just a preliminary one. It's got some improvements to the fancy zones uh, and a new uh, toy, a uh, file renamer. So uh, let's take a look. So I put the uh, link to GitHub here to Power Toys uh, in the description, but you can just go to the GitHub and then search for Power Toys. You'll find it. And it quickly bypass the installation. Just click on the file to download it, and it'll update and install it for you. If you've already had it, it'll go ahead and install over it. And just click on Finish when it's done, and then we're ready to use it. Now it's in my uh, taskbar down the system tray, so I'm going to click over here in the little icon on the lower right uh, that says Power Toys, and right there, and it'll launch it. And we'll get here to configuration first. So let's talk about that. The first utility I want to talk about is Fancy Zones. Again, uh, if you haven't already installed it, you know, haven't watched my first video, you just go over here. You can figure, configure what key you're going to use and some other configuration items as well. The first thing we're going to look at, we're going to say, going on here, it says Override Windows Snap Hotkey. So if you press the Win and Arrow key, usually it goes to the left and right of your screen. This will override those and take them to whatever zones you set up. Next, we're going to go down here to, well, we care about resizing if, when the window sizing changes, but you don't really do that very often, OK, or when the layout changes. But here's where we're going to make sure that multiple desktops are set up correctly. And it should already be on, but make sure that the uh, advanced editor for Fancy Zone, uh, the new one, the preview mode, is on. Now, if you haven't done it before, there's a link on the top right that goes to my old video, the initial release of this. But I have this in dual screen mode so you can see how to manage windows in different screens. And again, it has to be set up uh, here in, uh, in the editor. So I'm going to click here on Edit Zones while we're on this side on my main monitor. And I just choose a layout. And I have some already designed here. And we're just simply going to click on Edit. And we can drag these around, uh, get rid of extras. I'm going to drag these into different sizes. I'm going to put this one in the narrow one. And I'm going to grab it and move it to the left. And put another one over there to the right. So that's how you basically set up screens. Again, check the link on the upper right for to go back to my original video. But in order to set up the second screen, you've got to move the entire application over here and then click on Setup. And now you can set up different zones for your second screen. It's not intuitive. You just have to real, finally realize that, oh, it has to be over here in order to do these. Because applications don't move between screens. They just move into zones on the same screen. So let me set this one up with just the opposite, with a skinny one on the right and the other one on the left. So when you close a program, this only flashes for a second. It also flashes for a second when your system first boots. Uh, but this gives you an idea of uh, where the zones are on my two screens. So now that they're set up, let's uh, start using them. I'm going to go on the right screen, which is my main screen, and I'm going to open up Notepad, and there it is. Now I'm going to press my Windows and my right arrow, or my left, and it starts moving between the two zones I set up. So whichever zones you want to have set up, it's fine. It will not move to the left-hand side. Now if I drag it over there and use those same keystrokes, you'll see that it obeys those screen areas that were set up for the right-hand or left-hand screen. Better illustrated, I uh, move the editor over to the uh, other side so you can see how it moves around. So I use that key over there. I come over here, and if I don't click on the application, I'm still controlling the other one. The application has to have focus. So that means you have to click on it one time. So I click on it, and I use my arrow keys, and it starts doing what it's supposed to do. And then I can move it on to the other side and vice versa. So now when I use the arrow keys, again, the uh, notepad goes over there, even overlays the uh, current application in that one zone. But if I click on that application and I drag it over to the other side and I use the arrow keys, boom, it starts using those zones over there. So there's the new multi-monitor setup uh, that you can create zones on different monitors to snap your applications to. Okay, that was uh, Fancy Zone Editor. Now we're going to go to Power Renamer. If we go ahead and look here, it just says it's an extension to the uh, Explorer. So that means we have to open up File Explorer to use it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go over to File Explorer and find uh, a bunch of audio files that are named close to the same thing. Uh, 
there are re previous recordings for other projects. So I'm going to go there, find those, highlight them, uh, copy them in the memory, and then I'm going to go to this new directory I created to store this test and paste them in there. So here we have a bunch of files that are named very similar uh, in nature with just numbers indicating each different one. Now this is a very common problem for photos. Sometimes they're named uh, multiple uh, numbers like that. So we're going to go down here and right click and look what we see here. Power renamer. Now a caveat. It's not that powerful unless you really know what you're doing. In fact, I would suggest you do this on a copy of some files just like I'm doing here before you actually try to rename them because you can get things really hosed up. So you see as I type in here, you'll see that the name on the left changes to the name on the right. Uh, trying to tell you uh, what we're going to do to this file and what it's going to come out as. Now for those of you that are familiar with regular expressions, mainly programmers, uh, you can click this and use those in this replace box. But I don't recommend it for the average user. So let's talk about it without it first. You notice as I type in, there's no renaming. Now it's renamed the word phone and added in test to it because it's looking for phone and it added in test. The important feature of this is that it leaves the rest of the file name intact. If you rename things with regular in Explorer, it just renames the entire thing in front of the dot and you're done. Okay, you can do other things like case sensitive and if I put in a phone dot or phone test up here, oh, I reduce it to a, a lower case, it doesn't find any. Uh, so play around with these a little bit. Another feature of this is that if you want to, you don't have to do every one that you already pre-selected. You can sit there and click on certain ones and say, oh, I don't want to do anything to those files. To give you another example, I, you notice I have a open parent up the top and the word this. So it's replaced the open parent with the word this. Sort of silly, but the idea here is that you can see how it replaces individual characters with characters or an entire a word or a phrase. So just for demonstration, I'm going to leave it like this and I'm going to click over here on rename. Then if we look over on the uh, left hand uh, side of the screen where the actual files are at over here and we click on rename and you see that the par open parent is gone. It's been renamed, uh, isn't being used. So we're going to go back in now to power rename and move it back over where I need to have it. Now I'm going to do this again, but now I want to get rid of the closed parent. Right? So there it is. You see it's uh, going to be gone. So I'm going to replace it with nothing. So I say rename, boom, it's gone. So now here's the other set of files in here that I've already renamed without having any kind of numbers in or parentheses in them. And now I'm looking for the word power cache. And I want to change it to my files or my photos or whatever. I simply type it in over here, okay? And I want to go ahead and replace, oh, that says power. <laughs> okay, phone, yeah, phone cache. Now they show up on the other side. Uh, with the numbers still in them, and I say, okay, I want to get those all named over to something else. Boom, there they are, are the Maya files 27 through whatever. Now that's basically what you can do with it as is, but as I mentioned earlier, there is a website out there that's dedicated to the other function, it's called Regular Expressions Info, and this has all sorts of technical detail, how you can use uh, certain coded characters to uh, change all this out, and it's very complicated at times. It can be simple at certain ones, but you can get in a lot of trouble. So it's not for the faint of heart, uh, but if you want to get in there and do some stuff, uh, by all means check it out. I'll put the link in the description of the video. So there you have it, the uh, file renamer uh, feature. Uh, play around with it. Uh, be a little bit uh, careful though. So there you have it, the next release of Power Toys. Uh, a great improvement as far as uh, fancy zones and supporting two uh, Two monitors where you can set up zones on each side. A pretty good file renamer for a start. Uh, and let's hope for some more features in uh, later releases. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want to get more, just subscribe to Old Guy Geek. You can also follow me at Facebook or Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.